if you know, graphene has been kind of thought of as a wonder material, stronger than steel, uh, more conductive than copper, but it remains largely confined to laboratories due to production challenges. A uh, company here today with us, Hydrograph Clean Power, has cracked this code with a process and technology that they've been working on for years uh, that delivers graphene with unprecedented 99.8% purity. Um, Kirsten Brewer, thank you for being here. Um, let's walk us through what I pretty much touched on. Mm -hmm. Why purity matters here in graphene and also what your tech does differently that separates it from your competitors or peers. Sure, so I guess just to take a step back, of course, graphene is just one atomic layer of carbon atoms. Graphite is billions and billions of these layers, and that's why your pencil lead, for example, slides across a piece of paper. So most companies are starting with graphite as a feedstock, and they mechanically or chemically exfoliate it. We are purely synthetic, so we pump in hydrocarbon gases with oxygen into a steel chamber, we ignite that mixture with a spark from an electrode. We effectively create a bomb. It's an exothermic reaction. And all of the carbon that was in the hydrocarbon gas gets crystallized. If you can imagine this puff of smoke crystallizing, that's effectively what we sell. So just as you mentioned, purity is extremely important. We have the highest purity in the industry. And then also just for a couple technical uh, components that also constitute genuine graphene, it must be 100% crystalline and 100% sp2 bonded and that's just the way the electrons oriented that would be what makes um, graphene for example different from soot or acetylene black or carbon black now who are the folks you're selling to uh, the applications that you've developed over time so very wide ranging we sell to companies that produce um, biosensors so for example hawkeye biomedical was recently published in nature so we do sell to more technical areas like that we also sell to plastics companies, um, defense adjacent industries, automotive, um, almost anything you think of, you can use graphene for. So we are, of course, um, very focused on driving towards near term revenue and focus on mm -hmm. high margin application areas. Can we talk about what the expected revenue is um, near term? Sure. So we should pass uh, the threshold about half a million dollars this year. Um, could, of course, be much more as it's always difficult to predict exactly what the hockey stick will be like in mm -hmm. a startup. And as soon as next year, we will have in excess of $10 million in contracted revenue. Okay. Well, if we can just jump back to purity for a second. Mm -hmm. So 98.8% .8 purity. I think it's important that you hit on the fact that you're industry leading. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard um, is 50% or sub 50%. So how defensible is the tech that you've developed to achieve the, the purity? That's a good point. So we are 99.8% pure, but there are companies, to give an example, that have a high carbon content, but it's not graphene. So the ISO defines graphene as less than 10 layers. If it's more than 10 layers, they would say that's graphite. And there's a lot of data that's shown that these companies that are producing a lot of graphene or what they claim is graphene is actually graphite powder or fine graphite. So of course it does not have these um, superlative nanomaterial properties. And I feel that you know it is not uncommon for a new industry to have things like this happen as we improve in our testing, as we improve in regulations. I think this will become kind of known, but also we're incredibly lucky that we have the patented technology that we have that really does give us a huge edge. So Hyperion mm -hmm. is that pat uh, patented technology. Um, each Hyperion unit reportedly generates a million annually, if I'm not mistaken. A bit more. A bit more, mm -hmm. a million profit annual or plus a million profit mm -hmm. annually. Um, how much capital is required though to build meaningful production capacity from here on out? So these are, I would say, very, very cost effective um, systems. So the current design that we have is in the hundreds of thousands. It's less than half a million. And the production output of that is 10 metric tons annually. We are um, at very high margins, uh, above 70%. And we do have a new reactor design that will be closer to half a million. And it will more than double the production output to approximately 25 metric tons annually. So it's safe to say that you're really ramping up at this point into next year for the company? Absolutely. We are very, very excited to have announced that we have partnered with a major gas supplier for a Texas facility. So that is going to be something that 
We are working on the definitive agreement with that company now. That should be something that we're going to be able to disclose in the next two months. Mm -hmm. And we are anticipating for that facility to be open as soon as Q1. And that will be um, really allowing us to be in the hundreds of tons of annual production capacity with the obvious intent that this is going to really grow as we scale. So everything is planned for expansion. And another big thing that is exciting is uh, up listing uh, on the NASDAQ. Can yes. we talk about what's uh, going on behind the scenes to make this possible for the company as well? Yes. So that's a great question. It goes without saying this is going to be tied to commercial milestones to everything that we're really delivering on operationally. And I think that, um, so I'm frequently reading the CEO.ca forums. Good, good. <laughs> I know a number of investors have been a little bit concerned with the changes that we've had to the board. And just to reassure everyone, these are all planned changes. We have really needed to really improve in the experience level, especially regarding audit expertise. That is absolutely critical to have in advance of NASDAQ, having more governance expertise, and really just having that big company background that we now have, especially um, with Tom Wilkinson. We're so, so pleased that he's able to join the company. And you know, we obviously thank David Williams and Paul Cox for all of the time that they've put into the company. I think they've really been absolutely critical in helping us get to this stage. But this is just one of these growing pains that you have in a company of our size. You know, we have been in the micro cap space. And now that we're really ready and, you know, preparing ourselves for the uplisting, um, I do think that, you know, internally we understand these as very, very positive changes. Um, let's also talk about, uh, you know, in terms of market size, the mm -hmm. graphene market is expected to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, what's your realistic market share here? Yeah, you know, so that's a hard question. I think that um, to, to say a couple things just on the industry now, it's probably the whole market's probably worth hundreds of millions and they're projecting it to be worth 2.5 billion by 2028. This is really, um, I think, an interesting point for the industry because, as I mentioned, all these companies, they're selling what isn't really graphene. You know, it's more like graphite powder. And so if, if you believe, you know, in Hydrograph's tech, and I think that we have, um, not only do we release more data than any other company, we have a better ability or, yeah, a better ability to scale. So we really could be that catalyst to get it to grow, not only to that level, but I think far beyond. So I think that, you know, we could have a very, very large um, percentage mm -hmm. of the market share. It just really comes down to, can we continue to deliver? Can we execute? Can we raise enough capital to be able to scale okay. as quickly as we might need to? Because I think that, you know, all things considered, um, we, we kind of have all the cards for this to be an overwhelming success. Well, the customers that are purchasing, you know, in genuine uh, mm -hmm. graphene, what will it take for them to kind of look at you guys and say, okay, well, this is actual pure material. Let's let's purchase from, from these guys instead. That's a very good question. And so I would say that to maybe take a step back, I think our audience is aware that we had a change in management in March of last year that put me in as CEO. I think that previously we didn't have enough application development data. And so it's kind of like we had a computer that we hadn't turned on and we're like, hey, by this computer. Well, now that we've turned on the computer and we know the functionality, it's been a very, very easy sale. So I would say that our reputation, and that's um, a lot of the work that we've done, I've said publicly how strongly I feel about the Geek, that's the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center that is affiliated with the University of Manchester where Graphene was discovered in 2004. So it's this great innovation hub, and it's really a central point for customers worldwide to go to when they want to integrate graphene into their product line. And so hmm. they have to have a very unbiased approach. They need to use the best performing graphene for each project. And we've performed very, very well in that system. And so just to remind our audience, you know, we're really looking at 18 month development cycles. So I was moved to CEO in March of last year. That means we're right coming on the end of a lot of these, you know, first you start with the laboratory trials and then you go to industrial trials. So a lot of these trials are going to come to completion by year end, and we really should um, be driving towards long-term supply agreements. And I have also witnessed many companies that were using another graphene from another company are now starting to switch to hydrograph. So everything is really taking on a life of its own. I think the reputation that we've built is very, very strong. And I 
again, credit where it's due to the geek. It's just been a great system for us to be a part of. And again, it's all just due to the performance that we have that's due to the patented technology that we're, we're lucky to be able to work with. Well, we'll stand to watch uh, mm -hmm. how you guys perform over the next few months and uh, into next year. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for being here, Kristen. And thank you guys for watching. Um, you can find uh, the company under the ticker symbol HG on the CSE. But of course, as we've mentioned, there's an active board on CEO.ca. Go over there and check out what other people are saying about the company. Thanks for watching.